mobile devices can be quite magical for both students and their teachers. I'm Shelley Sanchez Terrell and I want to tell you today about the magic of mobile learning. This is to get you started with the basics. Many students today sit in desks all day and learn from textbooks. It can be very unhealthy to sit in a desk for eight hours a day. With a mobile device, you can change this. Your students can go outside and they can begin taking pictures and audio recordings and make videos of all the learning that surrounds them. So you can really tear down the four walls of your classroom. Mobile learning promotes better classroom management, physical and mental well-being, continuous learning, real-world learning. You will see that your students begin to be more creative and because they're moving around, they will be engaged and excited and pay more attention. Plus, it's more student-centered. Now, you may be pretty nervous about teaching with mobile devices, but let me tell you that you actually use a mobile device pretty much every single day you train yourself. Let's prove it. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Which of the following do you feel comfortable doing on your cell phone? It doesn't have to be a smartphone, but it can, or an iPad or an ebook, any of those options. Do you feel comfortable texting, taking a picture or video, recording audio, downloading and using apps, or using the internet? Now, you may have figured out that you know how to do many of these things in this particular poll. Now, these are what are called low-end skills, but these are many of the great things that you can use with your students to create digital stories and many, many other types of multimedia projects. Now, these are higher technology, higher skilled tasks. So, you may not know as much, but you'll see that you probably can do a lot with your mobile device. How comfortable do you feel editing a picture, a video, creating a QR code, creating content with an app, or publishing, posting on Facebook, um, tweets, pictures, all of that are great skills to have. Now, do you feel much better about your abilities to teach with a mobile device? I told you, you know a lot already. There are many helpful features that are with, come with mobile devices that you can use without the internet. So it makes it really fantastic because this is a great tool to have on the go. Students can record audio, video, capture images, they can take notes, they can scan different types of information, they can use augmented reality where it's learning but it interacts with the real world environment, they can text and then they can also take note of their location which can be important but does come with safety risks. Let's get into some great ideas and ways to use your mobile device. Well, let's get students to explore their learning through senses, and you can do this with a mobile device. For example, next time you go on a field trip, your students can take pictures, they can record sounds, and then they can play guessing games with all this information. You can set the criteria. So instead of saying something, for example, if they go to the aquarium, uh, take a picture of a of a fish or take a picture of, uh, of a mollusk or something like that, you can say record a sound and they can really interact with the exhibits this way of, of an animal that makes a noise. They can actually uh, talk about it, narrate it, tell you why they really love this animal. So there's so much that they can collect with the mobile device. They can play these several games that I'll suggest to you. What am I? Well, even if with their cell phone or an iPad or tablet, they can do any of these activities. This is students choosing an object, uh, for example, like a soda pop, or and they can capture clues. They can be multimedia tools. So, for example, they might take a uh, recording of a sound of it pouring in a glass, of them opening the cap. They could take pictures, really, uh, close-ups, and then they play a guessing game that you mix up the devices and then their partners have to figure out what object they took a picture of or what they were thinking of what 
they were trying to discover. They can also do this as an icebreaker at the beginning of the year to get to know each other. This is called Who Am I? So what they do is they take, um, you can either give them the criteria or the questions ahead of time, like what is your favorite food? Where do you like to go study? What's your favorite color? What is your, the place that you love traveling this summer? Different types of questions. And the students do not say their name, but they record themselves reading it on their mobile device and then you switch devices and then they have to guess which they have to find each other find, use these clues to find each other it's really great for taking field observations so this is great for science fair projects or learning about different uh, science phenomenons or experiments they can take a field journal and what they do is they basically um, they come up with a hypothesis and they observe either weather or nature or a bug or rocks or anything that changes over time because for time they're going to make their hypothesis and then they're going to take notes uh, images they can even use the geolocation I would recommend something like Evernote is a great app for this or they can do this with Posturus it's a fantastic app and an online journal it also allows them to record their location which can be very good for uh, one of these types of projects. They can use this with their science fair projects to gather information. Now you may be shaky because he's using it by the water. Well, you can use plastic bags with any mobile device and they can still use them, the touch devices at least, and then they don't ruin them or get their fingerprints. It's a great way to maintain mobile devices. I learn about some of my favorite apps from my students and I've used mobile devices in many many different countries at least 12 different countries and I've taught students as young as two years old all the way to 80 years old in Greece in Germany in the US and so one of the things I like to do is app Mingo so students what they do is they usually have a favorite app that they love on their mobile device so let's find out about these apps because these can be really great for learning as well so students get into pairs and then you give them 30 seconds to a minute to show what their app is and then you blow the whistle and they have to switch partners. I Spy. You can try and figure out while I'm explaining the game. I Spy has never been done quite as great as with the mobile device. And you can try and guess what this little I Spy object is here. Um, so it's you can have the, your students categorize what they need to spy. It could be something for math, like maybe they have to do decagons, or maybe they have to do angles. Um, they could do science concepts, maybe animals that are outside and things like that. Or they can do grammar concepts. You decide the category, and then they take a close-up picture, and then they take the further back picture, which you can do with the zooming tools and a lot of touch devices. And then you play I Spy in class. You switch devices and you guess my this is my pug Roscoe yay if you guess that and Roscoe um, seems to pop in my presentation somehow each presentation <laughs> And he popped up again. Show and tell. This is a great activity for the beginning of the year and to get them familiar with their devices. Basically, if you have a bring your own device where students bring their own devices, they usually have pictures on it. And they have pictures, then you get them in groups of three and four. And these are actually teachers I've trained um, in Brazil. I did this with 800 teachers before. I said, get out your cell phones, get into groups of four. And show your different picture and then explain to each other what the meaning is behind the picture, where you took it, why you took it. And it helps them develop relationships and really get them to get familiar with the device. And it's a great offline activity. You don't need the internet for that. Scavenger hunt. Students get into pairs or small groups because I think it's really great to get students to do peer learning. Like Vygotsky says, we learn from our peers. And then assign them different roles and tasks, maybe one student takes the pictures, maybe one student um, gives the criteria of how the scavenger hunt will go. They're creating a scavenger hunt for their peers to follow. Evernote and Scavenger are great apps to do this with. You can also lead this as well, but it's great to get the students to do as much of the work as possible. So it's very student-centered. But you can give them guidelines. Guess the place. So students record sounds of something they hear in their environment, a bird or leaves or rain, the wind, beach, 
you switch devices and then the other student takes a device and they hear the sounds and they guess what and where. Is this a bird? Where is this bird at? Because it's going to be around the city. It can even be around the school. You can give them a few minutes to do this outside of class. And then the students can actually take these sounds and incorporate them in a digital storytelling project. Um, you create a database of Creative Commons sounds that you can use because you created them, your class created them. And it's a great way to teach Creative Commons as well and make that point come alive. Multimedia journals. So I believe in having journals for students every single day. I usually give them five or ten minutes to write in a journal with a mobile device. Fantastic! It can be a multimedia journal. So they can record an audio of what they feel or they can type in text. You can use something such as Evernote once again or you can use something such as um, Posterous or they can even use Google Docs to keep their journals. A lot of different types of pa um, blogging platforms will also have apps where you can use them. You can have a free WordPress app. EduBlogs has a free WordPress uh, has a free app as well for mobile devices. Real world math problems. So the problem with math problems is that a lot of them are not accessible to kids. They can't really um, get immersed in them. They, they, they may not relate to the child's environment. So students can bring math concepts to life. They can actually take a word problem that you see on the SATs or something like that. And what they can do is they can create it for their real world. They have to use their surroundings. They get into small groups or pairs. And you give them each of the written word problems, you teach them the concept of course, and then they create a video of the word problem. They pass on to the other students and see if immersing them with this video will help them learn the word problem. And you will find that it does. It helps them quite a bit. It helps them envision it. And it gets them into the practice of when they take these tasks that they're able to really take um, envision what the word problem is trying to get them to do that they can be in the place. These are some of my favorite apps, capsules.com. I think a good practice is many times to get an app that works online on the web. That's a website as well as well as an app itself. And the reason this is a good practice is because you may have a limited number of mobile devices, but also because this way, if you you can get students to be able to edit online too if they have a problem editing on their mobile device. Capsules will give you an interactive timeline. You can upload video, pictures, recordings, audio, PDFs, worksheets, anything you want is pretty much, <laughs> well not anything, but various different types of multimedia. The other thing you can do is you scavenger. Um, it gives you challenges. It's really great for creating scavenger hunts. Poplet is a mind mapping app. It's collaborative. Um, it's also a website as well and it's free. You can put links, you can put pictures. Ecobugs, it uses augmented reality. It projects bugs wherever these placemats are. Teachers from the UK got together and created this app. And on the website, they have tons of great lesson plans for students of all ages in many different subjects, reading, writing, English, and science. Talking Ben and News Reporter is a great app. What it does is anything that the students record becomes a video. You can see it here. And it's uploaded here. And then Ben and Tom narrate, narrate the events like they're newscasters. So they have to do this in pairs. Story Kid is a free app to create your own multimedia book. Now, this is Gabby, one of the students um, that I... I have interacted with in Brazil and she created this using the app. I asked her to do this and she created a great story about her family. But the, she could have, you can doodle on it, you can add audio, you can add pictures. You can also take classics such as the Three Little Pigs, Humpty Dumpty, and the students can manipulate them. They can switch it, they can retell the ending. It's a fantastic app. It only works on iDevices though. This is, it gives you a free a private link that you can share with family members members, etc. And you can use this um, link to be mailed and so it's it's quite private. And it does go to a particular website, but they can they can also view it on their mobile device. What is a QR code? Well, QR codes are basically a quick response barcode. And when you go shopping, you might realize oh, you need something to scan it with. So the same thing here. It's these little 
square types of objects. And now you can actually make them in different shapes and colors. These are a few free apps that are great. Um, iNigma, I believe that's in all types of devices. Spark Q Code, this is a great way to color in the apps to make them different colors and the kids like that. It's actually a website. Quickmark um, is one of my favorite apps. It helps create. If you pay for it, you, it's only like a buck, I think. And you can create you can create different things as well, your own QR code. QR Code Wiz is an app to color. QR Codes, QReady, and QRafter are on the iPad. So you can do something like attach it to a video, audio, or web story. Make sure it's more than them reading. Make sure they can answer polls. They can do so many things with it. You can integrate with Realia. The PEGeek.com does this example where he takes a skeleton and he puts QR codes all around and the students go around and they scan it and they learn about that particular part of the body. I think that's just so fantastic. He attaches it to games, interactive websites, and different audios and YouTube videos and things like that. It's so great. You can make a treasure hunt quite easily if you use Russell Tarr's Classroom.net QR Treasure Hunt Generator. And he gives you many, many different types of lesson plans on the website as well to use with QR codes. Here are some other suggested apps. Mind Blowing is an interactive mind map. It only is in iDevices. Animoto, you can create videos. Evernote has a series of apps that I recommend. There's uh, Scribble. There's so many different Evernote apps. Just search Evernote and you can see all the suite. And I recommend all of them. They're really fantastic. PS Express, Be Funky are all for manipulating images online. And then you have Pocket Wave HD. It's sort of like having audacity on your iPad. It's very, very cool. You can edit sounds. You can create podcasts. Show Me, Show Me and ScreenShop are great for carrying out lesson plans and then having the students. It records everything they do online. So if they solve a word problem, you can see the steps. It becomes a video. There are many, many other different types of apps, rep, apps recommended out there. There's so many great resources. Kathy Schrock is the queen of mobile learning. She's just fantastic. And I really recommend visiting her site, um, Kathy Schrock's Guide to Everything, because she does have a guide to everything. And she has this wonderful Blooms taxonomy where she shows you different apps for the different layers of blooms. iPad apps, um, you can go to teach with your iPad.wikispaces.com to find more different apps. And then if you want Androids, well, that's okay if, because she has a blooms taxonomy for that as well. Just to let you know, your classroom is going to change, and that's a very good thing. It's good to get outside of the classroom walls. That's how we learn naturally, by sitting down, by standing up, by using different types of materials. So it's okay to interact paper with your iPad projects as well or your mobile device project. It doesn't solely have to be just the mobile device. You can do lessons that kind of do everything. You can storyboard on paper before actually creating the video with the mobile device. Um, different ways to do that or you can do it solely on the mobile device. It's okay if the students are walking around as long as they're learning. Tips. Have flexible guidelines and rubrics for projects. I do recommend that you make a lot of these things project-based. Include a presentation so your students can get used to public speaking and presenting their ideas that are from the I, uh, that are from the mobile device. Delineate specific tasks for each role, especially in group projects. That way, everybody has something to do. Provide enough time for them to do it, but also give them time where they do it maybe um, extra time whenever they finish. Maybe they're finishing an assignment from the textbook or something. Support student input and choices and post the results online whenever is possible. I love mobile devices. I think they're fantastic. But as Bill Gates said, technology is just a tool. And in terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them, you the teacher, you are the most important. I hope that now you have a great adventure with your mobile learning. And if you need to know a lot more that's beyond the visible, you, th this video, then you can download my free mobile learning guide. It has 50 plus, plus quick tips and resources, talks about augmented reality, QR codes, how to get parents on board, all the forms for them to fill out, how to get your 
a, a class full of mobile devices the bring your own device movement how to talk to your administrators about it all these great things if you go to bit.ly slash M learning capital L I N K S it is case sensitive and you can find out more about me at bit.ly slash shell tarot and yes it is case sensitive so capitalize the s and the t you can see me right there working with a student in istanbul we're using the great mouth off app so she can t show me what she learned in english because i do teach language learners all over the world enjoy your mobile learning journey it'll be fun and great and can be quite quite magical